Alright, well welcome back everybody. This is Malik again, and uh, we're going to continue on the forensics missions. Uh, this one's not going to take too long. Uh, this is the second forensics mission. This one's called Cheater. And we need to detect some evidence of an image manipulation. Alright. So, now I've already completed this, of course, but... It says, uh, my client is being accused of cheating on his wife. Uh, a photograph has been presented in court that shows him with another woman in their bedroom, in their home. The woman in question is a known friend of them both. My client has stated that he did take the photo. However, he claims it was a selfie and no other person was present in the home or in the picture. As a, as a forensic specialist for a law firm, are you able to detect any digital manipulation within this image? And then you download the image. Okay, well, here is the image. It's a selfie. Well, it's not technically a selfie. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so there he is. He's got the phone and all that. Now, they're saying she was added in. Now, if this is a Photoshop job, this is a very, very good job. Uh, clipping paths are very well done. Color scales are very well done. The 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 hand manipulate. I mean everything. This this is a a, a professional Photoshop job. Uh, you cannot tell by artifacts and and things like that. Um, so this this is not a give me because of you know, bad Photoshop work. I mean even all the hair was done very well. So can't deal with it that way so we got to deal with it another way so uh, taking a look at it uh, the best thing you can do to kind of start this thing is first off let's take a look at the extension and you need to do a little bit of research on that extension now, when I first solved this a while ago, I solved it on Linux um, using a completely different tool. Uh, I had to actually do some research to get this thing solved in Windows. Uh, and uh, the tools aren't, aren't quite as powerful. Well, one of them is immediately powerful, but you just got to figure out which one it is. Um, but take a look at the extension. Do a little bit of research on the extension of the picture and what uh, that when you save it as that type of image what it does it does a particular thing that some other images don't do that's <clears throat> that's going to be the, the the main thing that we need to take a look at now as you notice there is a password that we do have to get to get by this mission just to prove that you know we can tell that this image has been doctored, um, but it will be it will stare at you if if you use the right tool. Um, so I'm going to run it through two tools. One just to show you that the image technically yes has been modified. The other one is a much more powerful tool that will show you uh, where it's been modified and will give us the answer that we need. But take a look at the extension, do some reading on that type of extension and what it does, and then take a look at forensics tools uh, that can take a look at what this image type does. So just do some research, play with some tools. If you stumble across one of many tools, the answer is going to just pop right out to you. So I'll give you a minute to do that, and then I'll show you the way I solved it. Okay. All right. So if you looked up JPEGs um, and what JPEGs do, <clears throat> why people actually save as JPEGs, they do compression. Um, so the, the file compresses itself and depends on how deep you want to take it as into the, the, the compression algorithms. Uh, we really don't need to really go that far, but 
um, whether it's a, a JPEG uh, EXIF, uh, which is from digital cameras, or JPEG JFIF, which is when we uh, put things on the web. Uh, typically, we just call them JPEGs, but uh, same thing. Um, but it does uh, compress the image. Um, there's a particular image size and you know quality and all that on how it's saved. But when you save as a JPEG in something like Photoshop, you give it an image quality. You tell it how much you want to keep and how much is okay to throw away. Okay, that's kind of what we're looking for here. Um, because what he's saying is that these are two separate images that were put together. Um, everybody else is saying, well, this is just one image. So we need to see, is there any differences in his image and in her image? So the one program I used uh, in, in Linux uh, kind of gave it to me right off the bat. In Windows, I started playing around, um, and I think one of the first ones that I played with, uh, let me get this out of the way, yeah, here we go. Uh, it was a program called JPEG Snoop. Now, what you do is you, you open up your image, and really what you're going to be pulling from this thing is all of the metadata. Um, offsets, flags that are raised, <clears throat> and things like that. So, as you're starting to scroll through here and you're looking at it, you're looking at things like color transformations. Um, you know, we'll get down, let me find out where it's at. Here we go. We get down to the, the Diffie-Hulman tables. Now, here we go. We got a Diffie-Hulman table here. That's all the colors. We got another Diffie-Hulman table. Okay, that's kind of interesting that we have two Diffie-Hulman tables in one image. But table is 123, destination ID is 0. <clears throat> Class 1 is the AC table. We go down and take a look at this one. There you go. There's another Diffie-Hulman table, destination ID, class 0, lossless table. Another Diffie-Hulman table. AC table. Okay. So it starts to take a look. Really what this program is doing, it's taking a look at the entire image and the compression ratios of pretty much everything. The number of bits per pixel and all that. And we do have a note here, low resolution DC component shown, candy code full res, and they tell us, you know, we can go into options, we tell it to scan the segment, and we can tell it to go a full ADC. And we can do a scan on that. All right, so it goes into compression ratios, histogram states, how it fills out the color, and I can show you a little bit more at the bottom here that we got an RGB uh, code down here. RGP components, RGP components, YCC components, YCC components, more RGC components. Okay, so we have red, green, blue histograms, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. So before a clip, after a clip. Okay. Pretty much shows that this file has been modified. Something has been put inside of it. All right. Now we have the hex codes all here. We could kind of break those down, but as it goes down through the bottom, because it's looking through all this stuff, it's taking a look at, you will get a signature file. Now the hashes, in this case, do match, but it was done in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, that right there is, is a flag that the image has been modified, but eh, it's not going to hold up in court. But looking at the overall compression characteristics and the metadata, image is processed and edited. Okay. 
Now, it was saved as a quality of 12. All right, that's fine. Uh, in Adobe Photoshop. So it was saved as a JPEG with a quality of 12. Pretty low quality. Small file. But this doesn't help us now. It does tell us that, yes, it's been edited. It took a look at every single pixel. It broke it down up here in the top and told us it has been edited. Okay. But we need something a little bit stronger than that. Now, there are other tools out there. But I stumbled across one, I don't know, about a, year, a couple of months ago, actually. I was playing around um, in CEH, and we were talking about steganography and all that stuff. And, uh, and I ran across another program. Uh, and it's actually one of the top uh, programs out there. And the greatest thing about it, you don't have to install it. It's called Photo Forensics. You can upload your file to them. And let me find it. It was called. Uh, P. No, let me go to my desktop, find everything out. There it is. So there it is. And I'm just going to upload it. Okay. You have things like, okay, the digest. There you go. It's a JPEG. There's the dimensions. There's the file size. There's the hashes. Okay. Look. When we take a look at uh, a couple of different modes, um, we're going to see something a little bit different. Uh, there is something, and we can take a look at, at JPEG percentages and all that type of stuff. We can take luminance and chrominance and all that. JPEG was saved at 99% quality, estimated. We can take a look at the metadata to find every single thing we can about it. All right, so all these are going to be giveaways too. And the original picture, of course. The original picture here is always going to show that there's the original. Okay. Yeah. But... When we take a look at the ELA, that's the error level analysis. And we could do it as the digest and just run over it, but I want to show it this way. This is the picture up here at the top. When it was really two pictures, it was, of course, him, and then in the room, and then there was her. Well, not only was it her, but if you can notice back here in the back, there's something right there. That's an artifact. That's probably, that's her purse. That was added to. Okay. So both of those things were added in there. What happens on error level analysis is his picture was saved at a particular type of resolution. When her picture was brought in, it was of a different resolution, a different compression ratio. These programs are able to look at every single pixel and take a look at the compression ratio on those particular pictures. Because really there's two pictures sitting on top of each other. And it knows that the compression ratio for this, all of this, and this, and this is different than the compression ratio of everything else in this image. So it must have been two pictures. One picture has the exact same compression ratio. It can't have two separate compression ratios. So it was two pictures saved as one. That right there is going to be your password. Okay. So we just switch back over to here. Password is ELA4 life exclamation mark exclamation mark submit it and you're through it. Again, there's a couple of other ones that you could have downloaded to do it. Why download a forensics program when there's one online that can actually run through the algorithm by itself? And you can't even zoom into the picture and all that stuff if you need to. If you find similar pictures, you can 
um, you know, do color adjustments. You can rotate if you need to. Sometimes you may have to rotate to match up pixels and all that. But that is dealing with an ELA. All right. So until next time, my friends, when we get into uh, forensics mission number three, this is Malik, and I'm out of here.